Friday, December 29th, 2023. Last business day, last market day of this year. It's been a great bull market year, and I don't think it's over yet. But as you guys know, I start off with the stock market indexes. And as you know, I have been looking for the market to have a downside correction because if it's overbought in resistance areas, uh, condition, and the expectation that there would be some sort of decline just before Christmas. Well, this year, it looks like the downside correction is starting today. Um, my expectation is that it will come back down to approximately this red zone, the support area, and turn back up and continue on with the bull market. But we're going to start getting out of our Santa Claus rally trades. And here's a chart. Right now, it's improving a little bit. We still have a little bit of a loss on two of the three entries, but they're very, very small losses. While the third entry, which happened to be the middle day on December 21, and the price was about 471 and a quarter, is much more profitable at this point than the equity minor loss on the other two trades, which could very well turn profitable uh, shortly. That's not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting because of the market action and the conditions that it will slip a little bit more for the rest of the day and or maybe on Monday and Tuesday, which is not good for the Santa Claus rally. If I'm right, then you should have, would have, could have taken profits on all three transactions any time yesterday and most of the 27th of December, Wednesday. And maybe even a little bit on Tuesday. But if you're following the rules of the Santa Claus rally, we're going to start getting out on Tuesday <coughs> of our first position. And it's FIFO. It doesn't really matter. First in, first out. <coughs> Excuse me. At 6.45 a.m. next Tuesday morning. Then at the same time next Wednesday morning and at the same time next Thursday morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Those are the three offsets and the time of day and dates for the Santa Claus rally, the way I've looked at this for uh, decades. Now, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. The, uh, maybe I didn't have my microphone in the right position before. But anyway, so far, so good. It will still be a net profit if we get out around these prices because of the one particular good entry and the other two are very slight losses. Let's go back to the indexes again. And this is the March futures contract, which you could have used instead of the spider. They would have been done about the same thing. Uh, the money's different, but the way the markets move because they're basically the same S and P 500 uh, are pretty much identical, very minor differences. So, looking for a little more correction and then a move up. Now, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we could rally enough to turn all of the trades profitable, but we'll have to see. Right now, that is not my opinion. We'll see what happens. Next chart is the spider. <clears throat> and I just showed you the Santa Claus rally on the other chart. We don't have any reversals per se today, <clears throat> but we did get up to resistance and we did get into, generally speaking, overbought conditions for most of the indexes, not the Spider SPY, but the next chart is uh, the Spider five minute. So you can see some detail. This morning it opened a little bit lower, around unchanged, and then started to slip after about an hour. <clears throat> so we've made lows today, lower than yesterday's lows, lower than the day before that, and lower than the day before that. If we are get able to get down below 471.68, then we will have uh, Friday of the day before Christmas lows being broken. I'm not sure we're going to see that today. Right now, we're down two and a quarter. 
DIA is down 90 cents. And here's the chart. Overbought conditions last three days. Not surprised. I'm talking about this starting for too long. And I think this is it. But it's not severe. Not a bear market. Not the beginning of anything long-term bearish. Just a correction. The Russell 2000, same thing dropping off below the lows of the last three days, all today. And I'm expecting a little bit more of a correction. And we have a gap to close here, so that's a good target, 193.80. Next chart, QQQ. Of course, the same thing, overbought, starting to drop back into previous trading range. Uh, there is a very, very small support area, not particularly profound. The one that's more important is gonna be around 389 on the downside for the low of the correction in, I expect, the next few days. Unfortunately, that's right in the time frame of the Santa Claus rally. By the way, on Tuesday, when I start my YouTube, we will be out of one of our positions already. And I'm going to tell you now, you might choose to put a protective sell stop just under the quotes starting at 6.45 in the morning on Tuesday morning and allow for the market to maybe rally back up some more and get a better offset a little later than the typical 645 offset. So the NASDAQ futures, March, overbought, starting a correction, small gap to close, which is unusual for a futures contract, but there it is. And it's right about the same as the other indexes, support level levels, and it looks very reasonable for the downside objective. And now we're going to go to the Santa Claus rally once again. Here we are. Two small losses and one pretty nice big profit. The net result, if you were to bail right now, would be, hey, Santa Claus profit. Now futures. Um, the E-mini in a different perspective. And, you know, there's, there's well over a million contracts traded every day in the E-mini on the average sometimes over 2 million, putting it by far and away, most of the time in the lead as far as the most popular futures contract to trade. And interestingly enough, it's also a stock market index. I noticed the bonds were very active a week or two ago, uh, actually beating out for a day, or at least uh, the E-mini on that particular day, volume wise. Next chart is the NASDAQ, starting a correction. This bull market's not over. Got lots of support below and not too far down. And then I think it's going to turn back up again well into new high ground. Let's say the second week of January. Next chart, bonds. It got overbought at resistance, turned around yesterday, and it's been following through somewhat today. But right now, it has managed to come back up to almost exactly unchanged, only down a tick or so. Uh, I do think this downside correction is going to be a little larger than just today's dip. Maybe down to the green support area here, 123.7. Um, and it's possible it could slip off a little more. The lower this goes, the less um, bullish it is in general for the indexes. So I'm not very bearish on this correction in the bonds by any means. My most bearish expectation might be down to 118-ish, and I don't think that's going to happen. Next, 10-year notes are about the same. Looking for a correction down to maybe 1102. We're at 1228, almost 13. So a couple of points. I know that's going to stop us out of our great trade. Going back to bonds for a second, you realize we got a buy signal at the very bottom of this bond market on October 23. That's an ER buy signal. It's my custom strategy, 100% automated. If you want information on this, as you've seen on my screen in the beginning of the YouTube, you can send the email to info at ersignals.com. Info at ersignals.com. Back to 10-year notes, probably going to get stopped out in the next several days. Don't go changing the stop if you follow the system or any system. That's why you have the system. You're not supposed to screw around with it much because you already believe in it and you're using it. And hopefully it's been doing very well for you, whatever system it may be.
crude oil <clears throat> dropped quickly and sharply yesterday back into this broad support area might be developing a head and shoulder bottom. Remember, it's my favorite pattern. I see them before they act, uh, before they start to work or don't. But here's the shoulder low. There's the head. And this could be right about the right time, right about the right price for the last shoulder low. The neckline would be across this point and this point and slant down fairly sharply, but there's nothing really wrong with the look of it, the angle and all that. And it's developing maybe in a major support area. Yeah, next chart. We have the natural gas. We've got um, just a rally in progress, very oversold conditions, way down to an 8.25 or so. That is under 10, very rare, maybe only once or twice a year that you get that low. So I think there's more rally coming, maybe all the way up into this green resistance area or a little bit shy of it, 2.9 and a half. That would not surprise me at all. Next, heating oil. Also, the possibility of a head and shoulder bottom if we start to rally, which remains to be seen. But the timing is right. The price is right. We just need to start rallying. We're close to oversold, which is typical. This is a perfect example of the start of the last shoulder rally. But, it, you know, we're a little early. So let's see what happens. Gold. <clears throat> Overbought conditions. And I hate to say this. But there's a possibility of another head and shoulder. But this one's a head and shoulder top. The shoulder, first shoulder, would be right around October 30th, give or take a day, including a bearish engulfing, which worked great. Then we have at the very top of the market, a whopping big bearish engulfing ER cell signal. And it worked great for a week and a half. And then at the low, we had a bullish engulfing ER buy signal which has worked great in the last two weeks. But the timing is a little early, maybe a few days to a week. The price is about right if it's going to be a last shoulder high. And all we need to see it for it to do is to continue to work its way lower. And I'll start to be screaming bloody murder, head and shoulder top. I've already drawn in the neckline in this case. So that's the breakout point. Let's see what happens with this pattern. This is very early in the stage of recognizing these patterns. It's my favorite. I've seen thousands of them over many decades. So I know what to look for. But again, it's early in the stage. I don't know if this is going to work or not. It's too early to proclaim that it's a head and shoulder top. Next chart is silver. Uh, a similar situation. We didn't get the sell signal on the first rally. But the top of the market contains, just like gold, a whopping big bearish ER sell signal. The rally appears to be over, and we're starting to make new lows for about two weeks plus. Yeah, about two weeks. It's not staying down there. It's coming back pretty good at the moment. But a close near today's lows, or even lower, would look very much like we're going to come back down to the support area again. And I remind you, yesterday was a bearish engulfing. Now, it's not my ER sell signal because we're lacking the overbought condition. But I like these candlestick patterns, bullish and bearish engulfings. In the old days, we used to call them a key reversal, bullish or bearish key reversal, or an outside trading range day. Next chart, platinum. Overbought, third day, starting to wait, work its way down. But a doji's an inside day at this point, and it doesn't mean too much. It's uh, indecision, although a little lower neck quote at the moment. And if we did get below yesterday's lows, that would turn out to be a little bit more bearish, but no signal. We needed to get above yesterday's high in order to turn out a red bear signal like this one at the top of the market, like this green one at the bottom, green at the bottom, green at the bottom. Red involved in the top. It wasn't a very good one. Green at the bottom. Red at the top. Red top. Red top. Red top. Green bottom. Come on. We had some great signals this year in precious metals. Copper. Resistance. Stop the rally. Starting to pull back. Between a rock and a hard spot. Could easily expect to see back into this red zone down here. 
Next, soybeans has failed. We got stopped out just in the last half an hour, it looks like, of our previous bullish signal that worked for about three days. Plenty of opportunity to get out with a profit if you wanted to, if your persuasion was to do so. The signal was okay, but the way the strategy is set up at the moment with the uh, trailing stop technique and the input numbers was slow. And that's all right. It's our default. We get lots of great longer term trades, green at the bottom, red at the top. That one didn't work. Green near the bottom. Doesn't have to be the exact low day, but you see so many of these that are the high day or low day for weeks and months prior and sometimes weeks and months and months and months after. So this has developed the ER signals to pick minor and major turning points in the market. B soybean oil, new lows, but a little oversold. Doesn't seem to want to start a rally yet. But now that we've been below yesterday's low and not quite a new low for the move, probably, we could have a green bullish engulfing if it will get its rear end in gear and rally above yesterday's high. But that hasn't happened yet. So no green yet. We did get a red on top. That's a bad signal. And that didn't work and that didn't work and that, that one worked. And actually this one could have made a little bit of money, but it wasn't much. These two here just failed. That one's eh, small. That one's medium to small. That one was great on that big sell signal. Next chart, soybean meal, minor new low, but for a couple of months, and I think it's gonna continue to work its way down into the support area, 364, <coughs> which is not particularly profound. In fact, that doesn't look good. Something happened here. I think this line is misplaced. It should be down to here. Yeah, that, that's where it should be. Um, that wasn't really defining any particular significant resistance, support and resistance that I can see here. Yeah, if I did that on purpose, it looks like it was a mistake. But there's some support here and there in a variety of little areas on the way down. Okay, next. Corn. What can I say? I'm going to go by the way of wheat, which is new lows periodically. Rallies don't stay up there. They hit resistance, turn back down, new lows, just like wheat. Here's the wheat. It's been doing this since the summer, July, August. And I think it's going to continue to do it. The last rally managed to get up pretty good, but right smack at resistance, overbought, and it's turned down. Right now, we're still going sideways. Next, cattle. Buy signal and not much happening. We now have a tiny loss, maybe a few ticks. We did not get stopped out as yet. Obviously, I'm biased to the upside because of the buy signal, but it just is not cooperating. It's going sideways so far. Keep an eye on it, an eye out for a breakout to the upside. Closing above 171 would do the trick. Next, hogs. <clears throat> support has been holding, but the last couple of rallies were kind of feeble. Looks like the support's not going to hold, and probably next week we're going to start to see new lows for the trend down here in hogs. Next stop on the downside might be 57. Next, OJ has been absolutely much better than I expected. We did have a whopping great sell signal October 31st. <clears throat> it dropped straight down a chunk for three or four days. Great trade. Got oversold, started a rally, made a new high for the whole trend, and then another large ER sell signal on the exact high day. And there hasn't been but one or two, three maybe, up days, four or five at the most since. And that was November 21st. Since this head and shoulder top formation with the first shoulder on October 31st, a bearish engulfing ER sell signal, and the head of the formation on November 21, an ER bearish sell signal, with the last shoulder being 
slightly earlier, one day earlier than I was expecting, because this is a circle that I had drawn before the fact. So it topped out with a bearish engulfing one day before I thought it might, and a little lower in price than I thought it might, and tested the neckline, bounced a couple of days, broke the neckline a little bit more decisively, and then kaboom. And ever since kaboom, that one, kaboom, two days down, three days down, four, five, six. Today is seven days in a row, straight down since the breakout. It's It's been great. Too bad Orange Just is not a lot popular, a futures contract. The minimum downside objective is 288. I'm looking forward to it. Next, Coco starting to bend over here quite a bit, but the normal, the longer term trend does not seem to be in jeopardy. We probably are going to try to bounce off of 4,130 to maybe 4,100. And there's a chance we could even challenge 3,950. We'll see what happens. We're nowhere near oversold, so it's got lots of elbow room to come down. Next, big break all of a sudden in coffee. It looked good to me yesterday, friendly, like it was about to make a new high again. This kills everything and twists the um, analysis to the south. So we're testing support at today's low. We've made a new low all in one day by about a week and a half. And it's nowhere near oversold. So I think that the red zone is going to be left behind and we're going to start to work our way down. The next level might be, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It's, uh, 175, 176 on cocoa. Coffee, I'm sorry, coffee. And <clears throat> that could take only a few days. Yep, okay, next. Sugar, oversold conditions, rallied very sharply yesterday, no surprise, but finally. But today, it's coming right back down into the little trading range that had in oversold conditions. If I'm gonna continue to be friendly short term, which I think is not a bad idea. It has to start to rally again right away. But I'm going to have to go back to being bearish immediately if it closes below 20 flat. If that's true, then we're probably going to drop off to the next level of 1885 and then probably down to 1660. Next, cotton the rag sideways between a rock and a hard spot. So far, support is held. Rallies so far pretty damn feeble. Next, back to E-mini. A nice little pop here. Let's go back for a moment to the indexes workspace and change to the one minute chart on the spider and the E-mini just below it. And we got a little rally going, but not a heck of a lot. I'm still looking for more of a downside correction. You guys have a great 2024 coming up right around the corner next Tuesday and profitable trading to you. Happy holidays.